subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Leela Bakore tutorial. We will now take up the last phylum in this uh, animal kingdom and the phylum is Chordata. Before coming to the various uh, sub phylums and the classes under this, we will first try to understand the classification of this with some specific characteristic features of each group. So when we talk of Chordata, that means the organisms which uh, who are kept in this phylum, they must exhibit or show some characters in their lifespan, any time in their lifespan. It can be embryonic stage, it can be young stage, adult stage, any stage. So the chordate characters are presence of dorsal solid notochord. This is a chordate character. <clears throat> the next chordate character is presence of pharyngeal gill slits. And the third important character or a chordate character is presence of tail. Fourth is presence of dorsal hollow central nervous system which comprises of brain and spinal cord. So there has to be a do uh, dorsal solid notochord, gill slits normally in the pharyngeal region, tail it is the extension which is beyond the anal opening and central nervous system which comprises of brain and spinal cord it is hollow and on the dorsal side. So these four are the chordate characters. Now we are trying to classify this phylum chordata. So if we classify this, we get three sub phylums. The first one is urochordata, then is cephalochordata and the last is vertebrata. Now, in case of urochordata, the notochord is in the tail region of larva. That means this notochord is present only in the larval stage and that too in the tail region. Now, we will take an important example of this uh, in the next video, but here we are just writing the important things. The larva undergoes retrogressive metamorphosis. In retrogressive metamorphosis, the developed structures in larval stage are lost. So here, the adults do not have tail. So if the notochord was present in the tail region and this tail is lost during metamorphosis. So adults do not have tail. That means they do not have the notochord also in the adult stage. So notochord is present only in the larval stage. An example is herd mania. We will talk about this herd mania later. Next is cephalochordata. In cephalochordata, notochord runs from anterior to posterior end and it remains all throughout the life and here the example is amphioxus. Now coming to vertebrata. In vertebrata notochord is replaced by vertebral column. So here the notochord structure completely is replaced by vertebral column and that is why they are called vertebrata. One more important thing, urochordates and cephalochordates. Together 
are also known as protochordates or they are also called acraniata. Cranium is the brain box. So they do not have the brain box. And we are talking about these two, that is uro and cephalo are called protochordata. And that is why vertebrata, they are also known as craniata because the brain box is present. Now this vertebrata is further divided. It is divided into two categories that is a natho stomata and natho stomata. A natho stomata includes mouth without jaw. That means the animals which are placed in this they have mouth but it is without jaw and there is only one class in this and that class is cyclostoma and the example is petromyzon. These animals they have mouth with proper jaw and this is now divided into two. Again, divisions or two categories and this division is based on the locomotive structure into Pisces and Tetrapoda. These are actually called the super classes. Now Pisces here, the locomotive structure is fin. So locomotion is by fins. Whereas in tetrapoda, as the name tells us, there are limbs for locomotion. Pisces includes organisms or animals which are normally aquatic and they have gills for respiration. Whereas tetrapoda are normally terrestrial and they have lungs for respiration. Pisces is again divided into two categories or two classes. One is chondrichthys and ostichthys. Chondrichthys includes cartilaginous fishes and ostichthys includes bony fishes. We'll take examples of these also. Now this tetrapoda, it is further divided into four classes. So Pisces has these two and tetrapoda has four. So I'm going to erase this and let us write these four classes of tetrapoda. Amphibia, then Reptilia, third is apes, that is birds, and fourth is mammalia. So these are four classes of tetrapoda. So when we have an overview of phylum chordata, we find that it has been divided into three subphylums. So these three, that is urochordata, cephalochordata, and vertebrata, these are actually the subphylums. And out of these three, two, that is urochordates and cephalochordates, because they are very primitive amongst chordates, they are called protochordata, and there is no cranium, no brain box. And that is why they are known as acraniata. Whereas vertebrata, where the notochord gets replaced by vertebral column, they have brain box. And that is why there is another term given to them that is craniata. Then next classification is on the basis of jaw. Whether the mouth is with jaw or without jaw. 
So agnathostomata, they are without jaw in the mouth and there is only one class that is cyclostomata. Nathostomata, they have jaws in their mouth and we divide them on the basis of locomotive structure. And Pisces and Tetrapoda. Pisces have fins. Pisces are commonly just termed as fishes. So they have fins for locomotion and tetrapoda, they have four limbs. The limbs may get modified for performing some specific function, but they have four limbs. Pisces are again classified. This classification is on the basis of endoskeleton. If endoskeleton is of cartilage, then they are called cartilaginous fishes or chondrichthys. And if the endoskeleton is of bones, then they are called bony fishes or osteichthys. And tetrapoda is further divided into amphibia, reptilia, birds and mammals. Important thing is this classification. Every, all these are included under chordates. And chordate characters are these four. And a chordate must show these characters in some stage of their life. It could be embryonic stage also or it could be embryonic and adult stage also. We have seen an example here that it was in the larval stage but adults have lost it. We will come across many such examples where the larva or the larval stages, they show these characters, chordate characters but as metamorphosis takes place, these characters get lost. So now one by one we have to take all these categories and we'll be talking about at least one example of each category. In the next video we'll start with Eurocordata.